Three times colder, performance cooler, first edition, vacuum insulated oyster, no ice oyster. We're gonna find out if that's all true. Let's see what's in this accessories box. A thermal battery? This cooler is already pretty darn interesting. Let's open it up for the first time, see what that's like. And we gotta attach that handle. It's a very unique, a very different type of cooler. And it has this one feature I can see already that is pretty brilliant. Open from the side we did, or open from the other side. How about that? I gotta say, that is smooth. I really like that lid. The hinges on both sides, it opens the same way either way. You can flip the lid around and it works. It's snug, it's airtight. Pretty brilliant. Another first impression is cooler is that it's just so sleek and smooth. You just kind of want to caress it. It's pretty smooth. It's, it's a lovely cooler. Let's try and put those handles on. According to the paper, this is incorrect. This should not be crooked like so. Oh, I see. So you can actually keep turning it when it works right, but it should it's locked in when it's just horizontal like that. That's pretty slick actually, pretty easy. You have to get this, you don't want it like that. You want it kind of centered. Oh, look at that. Pretty grippy rubber feet. A mirror branding so that it says oyster on the sand when you leave it. And it's pretty lightweight. I mean, switching out the handle. There we have it. Pretty positive first impressions. So now what we got to do to do the real testing is freeze these thermal batteries and see if it really doesn't need ice after all. Well, let's let those freeze overnight and let's use this thing tomorrow. See how it goes. The next day. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a thermometer that's sitting in there. I just put the ice pack in there. The, excuse me. I just put the thermal batteries inside the Oyster Tempo cooler with that thermometer and I'm just gonna let it sit in the shade outside for a while. We're gonna see how long it takes for that to come down. It's a Bluetooth thermometer so I can monitor the temperature on my app and I can export the data after so we can really see how this tracks over the next several hours. So I have been sitting here at my desk for the better part of the day, sipping from my vacuum insulated mug and researching the heck out of vacuum insulated coolers, which so far I've only found the one, the Oyster Tempo, which is the subject of our review today. Oyster claims that their Tempo cooler gets colder than your typical hard cooler like a Yeti, that it arrives at that colder temperature faster and that it stays colder for longer and that it does all that whilst optimizing space, weight, durability, and thermal performance. As Oyster puts it, there are three major thermal challenges. Number one is core insulation. Essentially, that's the cooler's ability to limit heat transfer between the inside and outside of the cooler through the cooler walls. The second thermal challenge is thermal bridges. The inevitable gap that occurs between a cooler's lid and the main compartment creates a thermal bridge where it's easier for hot or cold air to move from the inside to the outside of the cooler and vice versa. Oyster essentially says that the thermal bridge of its lid closure is smaller than that on other ice chests. And the third thermal challenge is thermal circulation or how fast a cooler gets cold inside and how even the temperature is throughout the ice box. The Oyster Tempo supposedly circulates air faster and maintains a cooler, more consistent temperature throughout, in part thanks to how metal heats and cools faster than plastic. Oyster has a patent on what they call the DLTA or Delta Thermal Technology, which is their vacuum insulated system that provides a solution to the aforementioned thermal challenges. Oyster also created what it calls thermal batteries, also known to the rest of the world as ice packs. Ooh. 
and their special ice pack slash thermal batteries are designed to not get down to freezing because if they did, supposedly, your drinks would actually freeze. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? There's not a whole lot more concrete information than that on Oyster's website, but you can surely check that out for yourself if you're interested. So, basically the Oyster Tempo cooler should get cold fast and stay cold for quite a while. But the real humdinger is the claim of no ice required, and that's what I wanted to test. So let's find out if the Oyster Tempo cooler really works without ice the next day. Okay, it has been just over 24 hours since I put those thermal batteries inside the Oyster Cooler and I left it outside. Now I left it in the shade and I didn't touch it. I didn't disturb it. I left it alone. On my phone I have an app and this app is connected to a Bluetooth thermometer that sits inside this cooler sitting on the top. In fact, let's make sure that's still intact. There it is. So after taking a peek inside, anecdotally I can say it definitely still feels pretty cool in there. Those, those ice packs are still cold to the touch, the sides are cold to the touch, and you felt a waft of cool air coming out when I opened it up. But what does the data say? So that thermometer gives me a reading. It's taking recordings like every couple of minutes. Let me summarize what happened with the temperature inside this cooler. I closed the lid of the cooler at approximately 11.34 a.m. yesterday. By about 12.10, it had gone below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's the food safe temperature range. It got down as cold as 30 degrees by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The hottest point, it hit about 38 degrees at about 8 p.m., uh, and that's from the heat of the day. It was almost 100 degrees outside yesterday, and this was just sitting in the shade in my backyard. And then it dipped down overnight to as cold as 34 degrees again. It went over 40 degrees almost exactly at 24 hours. So nothing else in there, just the ice packs. It did about 24 hours at a food safe temperature. Now it again, it's another hot day, so if it's cooler weather, it would probably last even longer is my guess. But that's pretty interesting. And what I was most curious about is, does it really get down below 40 degrees super fast, even having not pre-chilled the cooler because that's sort of their pitch? And absolutely it did. It did that within about a half an hour. So that's pretty impressive. Now I know this wasn't exactly a test with no ice and they say that on their site so I really want to see if that's true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those ice packs out and I'm just going to put in my lunch and some cold drinks into the cooler. I've got some errands to run this afternoon. I'm going to put it in my truck and I'm going to go do those things and we're going to see how it does with no ice. However, do note that I'm doing like they suggest on their website which is to have those items pre-chilled. So I'm going to be pulling them straight out of the refrigerator, putting them straight in the cooler. The cooler will rise in temperature because I'm going to take those ice packs out. So it'll be kind of like you just pulled that thing out of the garage and you're just putting some cold stuff in it. All right, so I picked up my dirt bikes from the shop. They just got serviced and now I am out here driving back to the office and I found a nice spot at a park to stop and look at the water and think about this Oyster Tempo cooler. I wanted to take the opportunity before we jump into the next test uh, to talk a little bit about the size and the weight and then the durability. It is true that relative to other coolers of a similar size, the Oyster Tempo is pretty compact. It measures about 20 inches wide by 12 inches deep by 13 inches high, which is much smaller than other hard or even soft coolers of a similar capacity. I find that it fits easily in the cargo area of an SUV or the trunk of a car, as well as many other places where bulkier hard coolers probably wouldn't fit. And it's lightweight. I mean, way lighter than a small capacity rotomolded molded cooler like a Yeti Roadie. At 5.6 kilograms or just over 12 pounds empty, even my kids can carry this around pretty easily. And they're pretty young and small. It has 25 quarts of internal capacity. If you pre-chill your beverages and only use the two oyster ice packs, you should be able to fit three 12 packs of canned drinks in this whereas you could only fit about one 12 pack in a similarly sized hard cooler with a two to one ice ratio, which is usually recommended. And the Oyster will still probably weigh less, though I'm not yet convinced those beverages will be as frosty cold without any real ice smothering them. And both the rigid aluminum handle and the shoulder strap are well designed, they're ergonomic, and they really make sense for this kind of cooler. Though I question the longevity of that aluminum handle as I'm pretty sure it's gonna get bent out of whack in due time. And while I accept that aluminum is quite tough, it's gonna sting when I get my first dent in this pretty fella. I'm not too concerned about the dings to the body of the cooler, 
but I am concerned about any dents to the rim or the lid. If that metal buckles at all, there's a very good chance the air seal will be lost and all its voodoo thermal cooling power goes out the window. All right, I found a great spot for lunch. I'm sitting right here by the Boise River. So let's start by looking at the app. So after I took the ice packs out of this cooler earlier, I let the cooler just raise to kind of room temperature. I was sitting in my kitchen, I put some food in it, and that was about at one o'clock. It is now 3.45 in the afternoon, so it's been not quite three hours. After I put that refrigerated food in there, within an hour it dropped to 50 degrees. Okay, that's the lowest it got. Now it's at 51 degrees, so it's been staying pretty consistent there for a couple of hours. So that's not too bad. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, I couldn't see this really working for days, but I could see you run into the store, you get some frozen chicken, you put it in there at, without any ice packs or anything else, and it's gonna stay probably frozen for the couple hours it takes you to finish your errands and get home. That's not bad. I guess that's kind of the main conclusion here, but let's see how cool it is. It feels pretty cool in there. It feels pretty good. We're gonna try some water. We're gonna crack open a soda. I have a piece of cheese. Then I got my salad. That guy's still dangling in there. Let's start with some cheese. Acceptable. Not super frigid, but acceptable. It's a hot day. Let's crack that water. Still pretty cool water, I'm pleased. I like my Coke real frigid. Acceptable. You know, when it's this hot outside, that feels pretty cool going in, and I'm, I like it. And this is, my guess is this is even cooler than that 51 whatever degrees air temperature inside the cooler at the top. It's probably still a little bit cooler than that. It's not down in the mid 30s, low 30s, like I love it. But hey, on a 100 degree day, I'll take it. Salad. Totally fine. Oh yeah. That's gonna be a good salad. Well, there you have it. Does the cooler really need ice? Depends on the experience you wanna have, I think. But just with refrigerated food and beverages in there, not even totally full, not even quite halfway full, it did keep it cool for a few hours. My guess is I probably could have gotten through a whole day like that and it would have been all right, but probably fairly warm by the end of that day. Now, if it was chock full of really cold food or even a few things were frozen in there, I think you'd even be better off. So I, I can see how that would work, probably even hold you over for a day or so. But am I gonna expect this thing to keep my beverages freezing cold, frigid cold, just above freezing for the whole camping trip on a weekend? Not likely. Now let's talk about what I like about this cooler and what I don't like. And speaking of liking stuff, if you've liked this video or gotten something out of it, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button below. It really helps. And if you enjoy these kind of detailed gear reviews, consider subscribing to the channel for lots more like this. But if you don't like this video, let me know why in the comments in a way that wouldn't make my kids cry. All right, pros of the Oyster Tempo Cooler. First of all, it's just a sleek and sexy cooler. It really has that Airstream vibe. Another big pro I see is that you have a much higher percentage of capacity that goes towards food and drink as opposed to ice. I also like that you don't have to pre-chill it, you know, because some of those big hard coolers that are plastic and have lots of maths and really, you know, three inch thick walls, they just take a long time to cool down themselves just because of the thermal properties of plastic, I suppose. But this aluminum shell with some insulation inside cools off really fast and I, I saw that in the data. I love that it's small, compact, and lightweight, so it's easy to move around. It fits in every vehicle I own. You know, it's just a handy size to have. That said, it's not a large capacity cooler, so it's not something I'm gonna take out on my week-long camping trips. I love, love, love that it has latches on both sides and that they work well. That's just a brilliant feature I wish now that all coolers have. It's easy to use, it works well, and you can remove the entire lid, which is also useful in certain situations. You can open it from whatever angle suits you best. I even think it would make sense to set this up vertically and almost use it like a little refrigerator in a van or something like that. I like how the kit comes with everything you need. Right now, at least, this is the first version in a pretty new launch. And if you think about it with those ice packs, if you really do make those work for how you use this, you're not gonna be buying ice over and over again every time you go somewhere. And that'll add up over time because ice can get pretty expensive. Another big pro about this cooler is you don't have to worry quite as much about where you store it. I still wouldn't recommend leaving it outside, 
but direct sunlight and heat isn't going to have as great of an impact on this as it would on say plastic rotomolded cooler whose lids are susceptible to warping. This won't warp, but it should still be stored inside or in a garage. And that tote bag that comes with it makes it pretty nice to store. It's also nice that it's small and compact, so it's easy to find a spot for it. The Oyster Tempo is also very easy to clean just with soap and warm water. The Tempo is 100% recyclable. In fact, Oyster even says on their website that they'd like you, if it's damaged or done with it, to send it back to them so they can recycle it or turn it into a new cooler. We'll see if they really hold to that, but it's a nice idea. And the limited lifetime warranty it comes with is reassuring, though it's a brand new venture, a new company, so hopefully they're around long enough to make good on that. Now for some cons. There are some things that I don't love about this cooler. I'm not sure about durability. Dents and dings are going to happen. It's inevitable. It's probably fine on the body of the cooler, but if it gets on or around the lid, you do risk losing that air seal. And I'm sure, given it's so pretty, those first dents are probably gonna make me cry. There's also some little pieces, and those little pieces are going to get lost, namely those little knobs that hold the handles to the body of the cooler. I'm not totally sure or confident about parts availability since it's so new, so we'll just hope that works out well. Another con is that this is kind of crazy expensive. I mean, at the time of filming, this whole kit was on sale for $500. $500, that's a lot of money. But if you look at the relative real capacity of how much stuff you can put in it compared to a similarly sized plastic cooler, you're getting more like a 45 quart cooler's worth of capacity out of this smaller cooler. So there's a little bit of trade off there, but it's still not a cheap cooler. And I also think from my initial impression, it keeps things fridge cold but maybe not frosty cold, at least not without ice. Using it how they advertise it, your beverages probably aren't going to be super cold. So is the Oyster Tempo worth that $500 to $600 price tag? Of course, like anything, that depends. It depends on your situation and your budget and your needs. I think this cooler makes a lot of sense for people that wanna just have a cooler ready to grab and go. You just don't plan ahead very much. You do impromptu weekend camping trips. You jump in the van live van and you're off to go in no time. You could just leave those ice packs in the freezer and as soon as you're ready to go, you pop them out, you put them in there with your food. You don't have to pre-chill the cooler, it's ready to go. It makes a lot of sense for weekend trips, especially just for a couple or maybe even a small family road trips. Beach days, barbecues and bonfires. Another kind of cool thing about this one is how often do you buy a product from Norway? All right, so what else do you want to see about this cooler? Let me know in the comments. Do you want to see it compared to other coolers? By now, you may be feeling a bit anti-ice after being introduced to this Oyster Tempo where no ice is required. But in case you're not, you really ought to check out that ice challenge video I did here. I think you're gonna be surprised by the results. Now gear up and get outside.